Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome you to the evening services of our church for Sunday, August the 14th. Per usual, we will sing a few songs, observe, observe the Lord's Supper, and I'll have a message for you that I hope will be enlightening and beneficial. And so if you would, we are singing from our songbook, Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the number of the song. If you don't have that book, I'll give you the name of the song also. So uh, you can find it in your book or you can Google it and sing along with us. Uh, the first song we are going to sing is number 580. 580. It is entitled, The Joy of the Lord. The Joy of the Lord. 580. <clears throat> the joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. He heals the brokenhearted and they cry no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. He gives me living water and I thirst no more. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Love that song. And if you would turn to number one. 103. 103. It's entitled, He Has Made Me Glad. One o three. He Has Made Me Glad. <clears throat> I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. 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 I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. I will enter his courts with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. I will rejoice, for he has made me glad. Our song before the Lord's Supper is number 705, 705. It is entitled, A Common Love. Seven oh five, a common love. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's Word. We gather about the Lord's table 
because of the love that God uh, has for us and that he had uh, 2,000 years ago when he sent Jesus to us. Um, we look at this song and it says a common love. I'm not exactly sure if there is anything as a common love using uh, that phraseology, but maybe common in the terms that it is something that's it's a given when it comes to God. It's it's a bond. The fact that Jesus came to earth and died for us is a bond that holds us to God. That Jesus was willing to uh, leave the throne uh, with God the Father, come to earth in the form of a human being, uh, feel all of the uh, pain, all of the emotions, uh, everything that a man could possibly feel, and then die a cruel death upon a cross. Uh, we gather about the Lord's table to commemorate uh, that death that Jesus died one time for all. And so we have emblems here at the Lord's table. We have bread representing the body of our Lord. We have uh, the fruit of the vine representing the blood <coughs> of our Lord that he shed for us. Let's pray for uh, the body of our Lord. We just thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, Jesus was a willing participant in uh, our salvation, that we can come to you through him. I just pray that you would bless us as we are about his table, that you would help us to understand that he gave up his body that we might live. I pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The blood that Jesus shed, he shed for the remission of our sins. Let's pray for the cup. We just give you thanks, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, Jesus was not only willing to be racked with pain upon the cross, but he was uh, willing to shed that blood from his head and from his hands and his feet and his side, that life-giving blood that poured from his body and poured onto us, that is the blood that forgives our sins. We're so thankful that Jesus made the sacrifice that he shed his innocent blood for us. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. The Lord's Supper is completed. But also we are commanded on the first day of the week to lay by and store that with which we have been blessed and give it back to the Lord. We're giving back to the Lord what is his. And uh, I just pray that uh, when we think in those terms that uh, we will purpose because the scriptures say that purpose in your heart, give that with which you have been blessed. Uh, God uh, doesn't deserve leftovers. He deserves the best. So as we give, let's remember that we give uh, through uh, sacrificial means. We give as we have been prospered. We give of our best. Let's pray for the giving. We're so thankful, dear God, that uh, we have this opportunity to give back. We know that the church is your institution here on earth that uh, is the, your kingdom here that does your work until uh, until this earth is no more. I just pray that uh, those that uh, use the monies that are contributed will use them for the benefit of uh, bringing more souls to Christ and helping those that need to be helped. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. <clears throat> And the last song that we will sing is number 202. It's called Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. The words are pretty neat. And if the music sounds very, very lyrical, it should. It is uh, 
written by Beethoven. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All my works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us, brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. I hope that you were able to sing with us. I know the Lord was praised and glorified uh, through our song. And uh, I just pray that uh, 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 the Lord is praised and we are uplifted. You may have noticed the kind of the uh, theme of uh, the songs was joy. If you were there for AM services, uh, you heard the title of my lesson this evening. It is joy, joy, joy. <laughs> Joy, joy, joy. Actually, this is part one. Uh, I have a second part uh, in store for you next Sunday evening. In the 126th Psalm, Psalm 126, if you want to follow along uh, that way, you can turn to that Psalm. It's not a very, very long Psalm. Uh, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Israel, uh, uh, this psalm was written in commemoration of their returning from captivity in Babylon. And it says, when the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like streams of the Negev. Those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. It was a joyful time when the children of Israel returned from Babylon. It was a joyful time that they could see their homeland once again after being in captivity <clears throat> for so many years. And so Psalm 126 is an expression of joy, which 
I hope the songs that we sang uh, expressed the joy, the joy of the Lord. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. He has made me glad. These are songs, I believe, of joy. That being said, we might ask ourselves the question, and that's uh, what the, uh, these two lessons are going to be about. Um, where does true joy come from? Right. Well, I would contend that true joy comes from freedom. The children of Israel felt joy because they were free at last to be in their own country. Now, that doesn't mean free to do what, whatever we want, all right? It's, that's not the type of freedom that I'm talking about. For example, uh, some young people uh, can't wait to be out from, uh, you know, under the rules and regulations of their parents. And usually if they were raised well, uh, they come to understand what those rules and regulations were all about. And good parents try to keep their children walking down the paths of righteousness. The problem is that sin is always out there. And the power of sin takes us further away from the joy we would love to um, achieve, the joy that we would like to have. And uh, it, it, it places us in a place that we stay longer than we should stay. That being said, um, there are all kinds of slavery, if I might use that term, other than sin, from which one needs to be freed. And so it's not just sin. There's more. Some are held in the bondage of, uh, of fear. All right? So uh, uh, that being said, uh, we need to be freed from that. And so what I am saying to you this evening is that joy is freedom. Joy is freedom. And it comes to us when one has this freedom. Some are held in bondage by uh, guilt of conscience. And the sad thing is, that in Jesus Christ, we have freedom. And so this freedom should not allow us to be enslaved with fear. It should not allow us to be enslaved by the traditions of men. It should not allow us to be enslaved uh, by a guilty conscience and being captive to a guilty conscience. Joy is true freedom. And so I guess the next logical question is, where do we find this freedom? Well, again, I would contend to you this evening that Christ brings us freedom. In John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you get get it here free people sometimes are enslaved by their prejudices by their uh, preconceived ideas but truth can bring us from this false narrative the truth of Jesus Christ in the same context in John 8:34 just a couple of verses later Jesus says Truly I, truly I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. See, just a few verses before, he said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. But sin can make you a slave. So with sin becomes this slavery, uh, slavery of a guilty conscience. Now, Paul explained this to us in Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, when he wrote, It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm, 
and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. All right? We, we don't want to be enslaved by this guilty conscience because Christ set us free. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. Don't go back. When we take the Lord into our lives, we gain freedom. Don't go back. Keep the freedom that the Lord has promised to us. Now, this freedom is not freedom from sin. Sin's still out there. It's not freedom from temptation. Temptations are still out there. But, and for that matter, freedom does not mean that we can just do as we please. We are free moral beings. God made us that way so we can make the choice. Our choice is either to serve God or to serve sin. Freedom is meant to give one the opportunity to serve others. True freedom is found in the service of others. Freedom is found in Jesus Christ. In the same book of Galatians, Galatians 3, 26 and 27, Paul said, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. When we are baptized, what Paul says is that we are clothed with Christ. Freedom from the bondage of the slavery of sin. Putting our trust in God's power to remove the guilt of sin from us. And so we show that we trust God to forgive us by being immersed in the waters of baptism into Christ. And we clothe ourselves, as Paul said, with Christ. Now, uh, Paul explained this principle of slavery with regard to sin and righteousness in Romans chapter 6 and verse 16. He says, Do you not know that when you present yourselves to someone as slaves for obedience, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? And then he got right to the point. Look at verse 16 and 17 of chapter 6 of Romans. But thanks be to God that though you were slaves of sin, you became obedient from the heart to that form of teaching to which you were committed. And having been freed from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Now, that's a good thing to become a slave of. To become a slave of righteousness. And so what we found in Romans 6, 17 and 6, 16, and what we find in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 4, they were set free by being immersed in baptism in water for the remission of their sins. That's part of our baptism. We baptize people for the remission of, of their sins in baptism. You take your sins to the Lord. The Lord, and you have, have you as you have repented, forgives you of those sins and remembers them no more. And you're freed from the guilt of those sins, from slavery to that sin. 
that's when we get into Christ, that freedom is found. Okay, I'm almost done with my lesson, but I want to make two comparisons. All right, two words, joy, happiness. I'll ask you the question and I'm going to pause. I'm going to let you think about it for a moment. Are joy and happiness the same thing? What do you think? Are joy and happiness the same thing? The world looks at it that way, I think. I think those in our culture, those two terms are synonymous. Happiness, joy, they're interchangeable. But if you want to be a wordsmith, if, if you want to really take the terms apart, there is a difference between joy and happiness. The root of the word happiness is happenstance. All right. Have you heard that word before? Happenstance. Happenstance is the condition one feels <clears throat> because of his circumstances. Because of the things that surround him. And so if the circumstances are great and the circumstances are wonderful, the person is happy. However, if conditions are not good, according to happenstance, someone is not going to be happy. Rather, they're going to be unhappy. All right, so I've, I've, I've tried to define happiness. Now, here's the difference, and here's what I am looking at for you to grasp this evening. Joy is not determined by what is around you, but what is inside of you. The joy of the Lord is my strength, is what that song said that we sang just a few moments ago. And that joy is within us. One who has true joy has been set free from sin and has a peace of mind that can't be changed by circumstance. And if we want to go back to the root word, it can't be changed by happenstance. That means I can still be joyful with my life even though things around me may temporarily not be good. In my wedding ceremonies, I always uh, tell those that I marry that you can only get the rainbow if there is rain. <laughs> That's where the rainbow comes from, from the light diffusing through the rain to make that uh, spectrum of colors. In our lives, rain is going to fall. Yet, we can still have joy. When we come to the Lord, when we are forgiven of our sins, when we know the course has been set for us to live with the Lord forever after we pass out of this mortal body, that's joy. And in that joy is strength. Joy is the contentment that one has because he or she has a relationship with God. We know in Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 that Paul said, he learned to be content in every circumstance. He knew what it was like to be hungry. He knew what it was like to be filled. And that was his goal, 
to be joyful in all circumstances because what the Apostle Paul looked at was the big picture. He knew that when he passed from this mortal body, that he had the hope of salvation to live with his Lord forever. And brethren, that's joy. That's the joy that comes from within. It's the contentment because our, of our relationship with God. It's the contentment that our conscience is at rest because it's at peace with God. And there's a freedom, there's a freedom from guilt. There's a freedom from the power that Satan would try to wield over us. And so I would express to you, and I hope I got this point across, that we find joy in freedom. And so the question is logically asked, do we have freedom in our lives? Well, Paul told us what we had to do. Those that are baptized unto Jesus Christ are clothed with Christ. And with that, we gain freedom. All right? We gain freedom from the power of sin, from the power of temptation, from the temptations that are out there from Satan. Because we have the power of God within us. And so if you're, you're listening or watching this evening, if you haven't taken the Lord into your life by confessing Jesus as the Son of God, by repenting of your former ways and being baptized for the remission of your sins, you haven't started that walk yet. You haven't found the true joy that can only be found in the peace of a relationship with God through obedience to him as our Bibles instruct us. And so if you need to take that step, get in contact with us, we'll be ready. We will help you in any way that we can. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the time that we've had together this evening. I pray that you would bless us, that you would help us uh, to find the true joy that comes in freedom that comes in, in the freedom that's involved in Jesus Christ. It's why Jesus came to this earth, to be the humble servant. It's why Jesus came to die for us, that we might have life. Continue to bless us. Help us to take this message with us this evening so that we can truly find the joy that's uh, wrapped in the freedom that is in Jesus Christ. Continue to be with us and bless us. Comfort us when we're in need of comfort and help us to comfort others with the comfort that you have shown us to give. We pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe. May God bless you all. As far as the east is from the west.